Welcome to the Gadget 360 show and I'm doing some of my favorite things, you know, a tablet that can also become a laptop, such a hot category right now. We've got the Samsung Tab S7 Plus. Now, very interesting in terms of the fact that the camera is great, the pen has a very nice tuck-in position, the keyboard is fantastic, but it's pretty expensive, right? So we'll find out if it's actually worth all the moolah you'll spend on it. Then we'll move on to this, the XM4s from Sony. Sony absolutely and totally took over and became king of the hill for noise cancellation headsets like this one with the XM3. But does the XM4 actually have a leap? Does it really take sound and noise cancellation technology to that next level? It looks exactly the same, which is a little disappointing. Then we'll move on to Schneider and we'll do a lot of home automation, all kinds of home automation, including retrofit. So you've got a house, there's no way you can pull wires out and put in new things. So you can actually put in some stuff which can be home automation retrofit or if you're building a new house, that and a whole lot more, including the Redmi Smart Band for about 1500 bucks. Now you have a actual fitness band is it any good that and a whole lot more on the gadget 360 show on the show we take a look at all you need to know about apple's big launch this week we review the samsung tab s7 plus and see if it's the true ipad killer sony has just announced the thousand xm4 headphones and they're already in our studios ready to be tested out and we walk into the schneider electric experience center to check out the latest in smart home solutions all happening on the show today now let's take a look at all the news coming in. Of course, the big news that came in is from Apple. So they had an event, they had it in September or Techtember as we call it. And it wasn't about an iPhone. I mean, talk about legacy, talk about the rules of tech being completely and totally broken. But yes, they did announce quite a bit. So two iPads, two watches, one of them an SC version, therefore cheaper. But of course, relatively speaking, only it's Apple. So, you know, a cheap Apple watch doesn't really mean it's cheap. It's just a little lower in price. So what else did they announce? Let's take a look at everything that Apple had to say. September for Apple usually means new iPhones, but Apple took center stage at Cupertino this week and announced new additions to the iPad family and the Watch Series 6. At the special Time Flies virtual event, Apple paid a special tribute to 10 years of the iPad and launched the iPad 8 Gen and a redesigned iPad Air. The iPad 8 Gen comes with a 10.2-inch Retina display, A12 Bionic chip and an all-day battery life. The iPad 8 Gen starts at 29,900 rupees. The new iPad Air comes in colors of the rainbow. It has a 10.9-inch liquid retina display and has much-awaited updates like Touch ID on the power button. Apple also debuts its new A14 Bionic chip with 6 cores and a 4-core GPU. There's also a 12-megapixel rear camera. Apple calls this their most powerful and capable iPad ever made iPad Air will run on the new iPad OS 14 and will be available from next month onwards at a starting price of 54,900 rupees for the Wi-Fi variant. Apple also launched the new Apple Watch Series 6 which now brings a blood oxygen feature or SpO2, an always-on altimeter and a colorful palette with new finishes and bands. Apple Watch Series 6 will run on Watch OS 7 that brings new watch faces and a family setup option and starts at 40,900 rupees. Apple stepped down the price ladder a bit and also launched the new Watch SE. It has a bigger display and will also run on Watch OS 7. Apple Watch SE starts at 29,900 rupees. The new set of iPhones are expected to be launched next month. And the big news from Apple this week is also that it's setting foot in India with online retail. Apple's new online store will help people buy products, get advice and learn about products in English and Hindi. We're moving from Apple to Samsung, always a good sentence to actually use both the company names in one. This is their new Tab S7 Plus and taking that entire category of a tablet that is a tablet and also very quickly converts into a laptop is exactly what this is all about. As always, it's Samsung, so the screen is absolutely fantastic. The camera in this far outstrips the iPad. I have to tell you that in all our tests and everything that we tried out, the camera on this is fantastic. But of course, 
It's more or less a moot point because you don't really use the camera on a tablet much, especially, of course, the back camera. Front camera, of course, with the amount of video conferencing that we're doing, I'm surprised. No one's really taking up the whole mantle of coming up with absolutely fantastic front cameras. I mean, absolutely professional front cameras is now the need of the R. I want something that literally is as good as maybe a DSLR. I want it that good, or at least the best in terms of phones. Keyboard, great. The fact that they can actually have something where you can tuck in your uh, the Samsung stylus, which is very, very important, and it really works very well, goes in and sits in a place. Very important now that we've all started using a stylus that it should have a place for it to sit on and we don't lose it. Apparently, people that actually have a stylus and no place to put it, hint, hint, Apple, lose at least a stylus through the lifetime of their owning their device. So let's take a look at our review of the brand new tablet from Samsung. The latest Android tablet on the block is Samsung's hard to miss Tab S7 Plus. Samsung has been taking out its own steady stream of Android tabs to compete with Apple's iPad. But with this one, they have upped the ante, made it 5G ready for some markets and it boasts of some serious specs. But yes, the Samsung Tab S7 Plus does cost an arm and leg at 79,999 rupees for the LTE variant that we got for review. The S Pen comes bundled with the snake, but the keyboard cover is priced at an additional 17,999 rupees. It is an expensive proposition, but is it one worth considering? We are firing up this beauty to find out. We didn't get the catchy mystic bronze color, but the black one. It is thinner and lighter than the 12.9 inch iPad, and it has well rounded edges. It looks premium and we love the magnetic glass strip that runs down the cameras at the back. This is where the S Pen can be seated. The magnet doesn't seem very strong though so we did have an eye out for our S Pen. The keyboard cover is handy that way as it comes with some protection for the S Pen and a kickstand at the back. The magnetic keyboard works as soon as it's snapped on and we'll get to the typing experience in a bit. This is a 12.4-inch screen. Samsung screens are second to none and the Tab S7 Plus is no different. This is a Super AMOLED WQ-XGA Plus display, which basically gives crisp image quality and rich color reproduction. It truly is one of the best screens we have come across in this form factor. There are speakers on either sides of the tablet and sitting back and watching videos on this is a delight. This is the LTE variant and it does have a SIM slot. The LTE variant is always more convenient to use while on the go. The power in this tablet is derived from the mighty Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset that comes in the Tab S7 Plus. This is backed up with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage in our variant. Apps launch very fast and switching between them is seamless too. We worked with multiple apps on different windows as well and it gave us no hiccups. This along with a 120Hz refresh rate screen makes this a very smooth tablet experience. And Samsung has ensured this by running on a customized UI based on Android 10. In the Samsung DeX mode, all the apps are neatly lined up on the left and the current apps are below. It is an intuitive UI but in vertical mode it does remind us a lot of the Galaxy Note smartphones. The keyboard cover is small but it offers a decent typing experience. It is a little flimsy but it will get your work done. With the keyboard cover, the Tab S7 Plus gives us a good laptop feel. One of the big reasons to go for the Tab S7 Plus would be the S Pen. It is much smarter, the pen icon automatically hovers as soon as the S Pen is taken off its stand. There are many air actions to choose from and it's super useful in making quick notes or sketches. It doesn't offer a pen to paper feel though. There is a massive 10,090 mAh battery powering this beast and it will be enough for two days of heavy use on LTE. On Wi-Fi, it will last you even longer. Samsung has knocked it out of the park with its cameras. The 8 megapixel front camera is perfect for calls and the 13 and 5 megapixel lenses on the back do a fantastic job in taking pictures. It beats competition here with different modes to play around with as well. There is UHD 4K video recording as well. Buy the Samsung Tab S7 Plus if it fits your budget and if you're looking for a worthy iPad alternative. It does well with the S Pen capabilities and is the best Android tab with its near windows like software and gorgeous display. These are the Sony XM4s and I have to tell you that at one time both completely and totally 
owned this category, noise cancellation headsets, the over the ear kind that these are. Sony then with the XM2 and then specially with the XM3, absolutely and totally took over this market. The XM3 is in terms of bass response, in terms of, you know, watching a movie on it at night or just listening to music really, really took over. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, there was very less that you could really complain with the XM3, which is why expectations from the XM4 are sky high. The first disappointment, they look exactly the same as the XM2 or the 3, which is a big disappointment. I mean, you do expect after two years that they'll make them look different. Now, the app has been enhanced quite a bit and you can really customize the way you want your music or sound to really be. There's also something where the location that you're in also is something that it can become very aware of and therefore can change the way it actually makes noise cancellation happen, the sound happen. But I have to say again, they may be great, but I think they could have done more. Sony launched the 1000 XM3 headphones back in 2018 and with it, they almost set a benchmark in the segment for what good quality noise cancelling was. Bose and other brands do come pretty close, but if we are to go by just the active noise cancelling or ANC capabilities, Sony was leaps ahead. Two years later, they are still fending off competition, this time with the next WH-1000XM4. But how do you improve an already pretty good set of headphones? Well, let's find out. In terms of design, it looks the same, but Sony has made the headband cushion slimmer and reduced the gaps between the hanger and the cups. The depth of the cups is also slightly less now, so once you wear it, it doesn't protrude out too much. We wore the Sony 1000 XM for hours at a stretch and found it to be comfortable. The ear cushions are soft and it's definitely more comfy to wear than the previous variant. Another big difference this time around is that you can connect up to two devices at once so you can be paired to your phone and your laptop at the same time. While most of us use different devices, this is a handy function. The battery life largely remains the same as the XM3s. It will give you 30 hours of listening time, which is ample. But how does it fare when heavy tunes are belted out? Well, it sounds a lot like its predecessor, which is not a bad thing. The notes are sharp and clear with noise cancellation on. It is a stunning sound experience. The detail and nuanced sound was a pleasure to hear on these scans. There is adjustable EQ with LDAC and DSEE Extreme. The noise cancellation has improved and there's a 20% noise reduction. The noise is sealed out and the headphones are great at tuning out mid-high frequency sounds. This can also be attributed to the QN1 chip that powers these. This is the same chip from the predecessor but it comes with an improved algorithm. New features include speak to chat where if you start talking, automatically the music will stop. There's also wearing detection, so when we took off the headphones, the music paused much like earphones. There are touch gestures as well, double tap on the right cup to play or pause, and if you cover the ear cup, it will turn on ambience mode instantly and you can listen to an announcement. All these can be controlled through the Sony Headphones Connect app that these headphones pair with. The app also shows up adaptive sound control, which means if you are traveling, the noise cancellation will be on full. There are presets like walking and running as well and these can be customized through the app. The headphones also recognize new location and can customize settings according to where a person is. Another big improvement from its predecessor is the 5 inbuilt microphones for precise voice capture. Call quality on this was very good. The Sony 1000 XM4 compares with Bose's QC3511 and NCX700 but at 29,990 rupees, it manages to stay ahead of the curve with impressive noise cancellation. Moving on now to Schneider and this is home automation, a very, very hot topic and something that almost everybody wants. But sometimes the biggest problem that you have with home automation is that you go to someone's house, see home automation, come back to your own house and say, I can't do it. I mean, I'm not going to suddenly break my electrical boxes, my switches and, you know, have something put in out there and then have wires going all around the house. So Schneider came up with retrofitting, which means irrespective of how your house is right now, they can home automate it completely and totally. That's one part. Second, if you actually have a house that you're building or you can actually take apart some parts of it and, you know, throw a wire or two around, then they have a second system. So we actually reviewed both of them. Smart switches, plugs and fittings. You have seen them on e-commerce sites and maybe even dabbled with the thought of getting a smart plug to turn your geezer on from your bed every morning. 
Well, while all of the ones you might have come across depend on the strength of your Wi-Fi, Schneider Electric has a whole host of different smart home solutions that are slightly premium and don't rely completely on your Wi-Fi. We entered the Schneider Electric Experience Center to get a first-hand feel of these ourselves. Let's start with Wiser. Yes, that's the name given to these little guys. This is a retrofit system that blends in with any existing switches. It has to be installed behind the switchboard and does not require any rewiring. What this can then do is make all appliances connected to this switch much smarter. It can be controlled through the Wiser for India app on Android or iOS or through voice commands. We tried switching on a table lamp, a fan and even an AC and it worked seamlessly. What really caught our attention was how fast the response time of the commands was, even through the app. Alexa, turn on the table lamp. Alexa, switch off the AC. This is because of an international gateway protocol that Schneider Electric uses here that depends on a gateway like this or a mesh network rather than on your Wi-Fi router directly. So you can be anywhere in the world and operate your appliances with ease or even schedule a time. The wiser solutions also work with compatible motors like that of these kind of curtains or even blinds. Power consumption of every device is not present on the app at the moment. Wiser solutions start at around 30,000 rupees for around 8 controls and a gateway. Moving up the price ladder from Schneider Electric's Kitty is KNX Dali. This is meant for big houses or commercial establishments like airports where some amount of rewiring needs to be done. Multiple light switches can be controlled through this and monitored. This also works on an international protocol KNX, so you can connect Dali lights to a KNX controller and operate it through this KNX Multi-Touch Pro which comes with different slides for different functions. Dali lights can be dimmed and the color temperature can also be controlled. The KNX Dali starts at around 2 to 2.5 lakh rupees for a 1500 and above square foot house. Talking about all the light power outages in our country is the reality, as is work from home for the near future. Well, Schneider Electric has the APC power saving backup UPS 4000 just for this. Priced at just 10,394 rupees, it has a 600 watts output power capacity, which means it can keep two computers and two printers running or even four to five laptops. The power shoot software that the UPS connects to auto saves file and shuts down the machine in a proper manner before switching off itself. The batteries can easily be replaced as well. So out of these, if you are looking at adding a dash of smart to your home, then we would recommend making the wise choice and going with these. They will not burn a very big hole in your pocket and yet get the job done. Let's take a quick break right now on the show. When we come back, a whole lot more happening on the Gadget360 show. Let's move on to this may well be one of the most economical and yet full-featured fitness bands. The Redmi Smart Band it has a color touch screen, has a lot of other features, about 1500 rupees and has made a lot of noise. But you know, I have to say this now about fitness bands. I think it's time for you not to think of a fitness band, but move on to smart watches. Smart watches do everything a fitness band does and then a little bit more and prices are at an all-time low. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to review this and just move one, we will review. When a well-known entry-level band marches into the segment for the first time, it commands attention and makes competition take notice. Redmi has launched their first ever smart band priced at a very aggressive 1599 rupees. But does it own the entry-level fitness band space? Let's find out. The Redmi smart band is not the easiest to strap on and wear. The clasp takes some time to close and it's a little uncomfortable to wear for long hours. There is a 1.08-inch coloured LCD display and the Redmi Smart Band brings basic fitness features to the wrist. There is a heart rate monitor, an inbuilt sleep tracker and it calculates steps. All the parameters can be seen on the watch face or on the app. 
It pairs with the Xiaomi Wear and Wear Lite app. There are many different watch faces to choose from and there are also weather updates, music control, notification alerts and call rejection. In terms of exercise tracking, there are five different modes. Outdoor running, treadmill, cycling, walking and freestyle exercise. The band is waterproof up to 50 meters which is an impressive feat at the price point it comes at. The straps are interchangeable and like the Realme band, the charger is inbuilt into the body of the Redmi Smart Band. So you take off the strap and plug it straight into a USB-A port to charge. The Redmi Smart Band can go on for up to 14 days and does well in the battery department. Redmi competes with the Mi Band 4, Huawei Bands and also the new Realme Band. It brings basic features which seem accurate and this can definitely be your very first fitness band at a breezy 15.99 rupees. That then is the Gadget 360 show for this week. As always, lots of great stuff coming up next week. Don't miss it. I'll see you on that show. Mm -hmm.